The first Gabriel Knight game came out in 1993, and it was with Sierra Online, and it was one of the first scary, more dramatic adventure games that had ever been done. So up to that time, it was more comedy and sort of quirky humor like Monkey Island and King's Quest. After King's Quest VI shipped, I had co-designed that with Roberta Williams, and I was asked to do a proposal for my own adventure game series. And I only had maybe a month, so I didn't have anything in mind when I started other than I knew, I really had loved Colonel's Bequest, Lorbo, and I wanted to do a mystery of some sort, but I wanted it to be um, involved paranormal just because I'd always really been fascinated by that subject. New Orleans was definitely uh, chosen because of Anne Rice. I loved her books growing up and it just gave me a real feeling for that Southern Gothic texture of New Orleans or Charleston. What can I do for you, detective? Hmm? I bet, just a minute. It lives, I see. The inspiration visually for Gabriel Knight was more sort of a cross between John Constantine and like a James Dean biker boy. You know, he's just intended to be a rogue kind of character, you know, that sort of leather clad bad boy that is appealing even while he's sort of dangerous. You're going to be reincarnated as a pit bull if you keep screwing with your karma. Grace is, is sort of how I pictured a modern independent female responding to Gabriel that there's like attraction and also repulsion at the same time. Uh, visually, she's not particularly based on, on any one character, but her, her haircut is a little bit like mine was at the time. I'm really excited that we're getting the opportunity to do a Gabriel Knight remake. Over the past 20 years, I've, I've gone to the license holder a number of times hoping to make a Gabriel Knight 4. And it finally worked out for us to do a Gabriel Knight game again, and it made total sense to remake the original because, you know, this generation hasn't seen Gabriel Knight, and it's a great opportunity for us to, to get a new audience and hopefully revitalize the franchise and continue to move forward with more new games. I would say that Gabriel Knight has definitely inspired my work as a reference of how mature and serious games can be with serious storylines. My favorite moment of Gabriel Knight is not very flashy. What I most recall and what I most enjoyed is just heading out to uh, you know explore New Orleans with the lovely jazz music and just thinking about visiting the next location on the map was maybe the best moment I can recall. That thrilling sense of exploring new places. I played Gabriel Knight when it first came out. I remember it was one of the first games where I actually got to try out my new 486 desktop system. It was awesome. Gabriel Knight was a huge influence on The Longest Journey, definitely, both in terms of the maturity of it and the sense of this sort of dark, modern fantasy story. It, it really made me feel like you can do games like that. You can tell interesting stories uh, that aren't just funny or cartoony, but they're grown up and they're real and they're dark and they're great. I played Gabriel Knight, uh, Sins of the Fathers, for the first time when I was probably around 15 years old. So I was old enough to actually understand some of the darker material and it really stuck out in my mind. I have no shame. I will say that I actually told my composer that I wanted my main theme for St. Christopher's to sound a bit like the bookshop theme. I am obsessed with that theme. It is just beautiful. So Sins of the Father was, was a, a really great game and, and the whole theme was very dark with the, with the voodoo mythology and it, it, it was just a very emotional and, and quite scary and quite a dark game and, 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 and it was exactly what interactive narrative should be. Like her, I've been writing games, ooh, I've been writing for 35 years. She, of course, is much too young to have been writing for so long. Um, we are both enormously privileged to still have people who want to play our games. It's, it, it really is a huge privilege. And she clearly deeply cares about her audience, as I do. And, and I salute her um, in that. And we, we love writing games. And we love the fact that people still want to write the games. And, and it is, as I say, a huge privilege.